Hello, welcome to Guard Patrol Products. My name is Simon Tranter and today we're going to look at installing the patrol management software and also the basic setup uh, of the system. Initially, please insert the CD or USB flash drive provided in your starter kit. Right click in the bottom left hand corner on the Windows flag and select File Explorer. Then browse to your flash drive or your CD. In this case I've selected the Patrol Software CD and the program we're interested in is Setup EM. You right click on this, run as administrator Right, if you're in a secure environment, you will be asked to uh, enter a password, you know, the admin password, which I'm doing at the moment. You click yes, and it will then start with the installation process. In this screen, it's telling us where the software is going to be installed. Um, for most systems, you know, if it's just going to be a single user logging onto the computer and operating the patrol management software. Um, this location will be fine. However, if you're going to have multiple users on a single computer, you know, different users logging onto the computer and then using the patrol management software, it's, we would recommend that you install the software in a, a separate folder on the C drive to avoid virtualization issues um, of the data. Um, you know, with Windows 7 and above, you would effectively have a database being maintained for each user which would mean to say information wouldn't be stored in the same place. So to, to install into a separate folder, we click Browse. Uh, I created a folder earlier which is called GPP Patrol Software, which we select. We click OK. We click Next. Um, this is the name uh, of the shortcut that's going to be created on the desktop. We click Next. Um, just confirming what we've just done. Uh, this is a summary telling us we've, uh, you know, where it's going to be installed, uh, etc. So we click install and, and now that the software is being automatically loaded onto the computer's hard drive. This will take a few moments, obviously depending on the spec of your computer, uh, but usually it's uh, pretty painless. Um, when it's finished installing the files, it will try and install the device driver for the USB download uh, cable that's used in conjunction with the uh, Mini Tool Pro data reader. Okay, so here it is. This is a Silicon Labs driver that we use. We click install. Okay, in this particular scenario the driver is already on this machine or it's more up to date so we just click OK and um, away we go and that's it. We just click finish. Job done. So if I close the file explorer we can now see the uh, patrol management icon that's been installed on the desktop. Okay, to uh, open the software, we right click and click open. Or you could have double clicked on the icon. Uh, either way, one will work. Uh, the software will now load up with the uh, asking for the login password. It's just setting a few things up uh, as we're waiting here. Okay, so um, the password's 999. Uh, if we click click on here, it just gives you a little hint. 999. So we're going to put that in. And now we're logging into the software. And this is the opening screen. The first question that you'll get asked is to register the reader. So we click yes. Okay, this is about telling the software which type of reader uh, the system needs to communicate with. So I'm just plugging in the USB cable and connecting the reader via the magnetic USB download cable. Now as soon as you initiate connection with the reader, it automatically reads the reader type. So here we go, that, that's confirmed that everything is, is communicating. All right, so I simply click exit. At this point, um, we need to just sort of like do a few things to set the reader up to make sure it's ready for use. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to basic operation, select reader timing, and I click on the icon and I get a message that comes back 
this time it's successful so we click OK um, the next thing that we do is clear the reader data and we get a message here confirming you know do we want to do this and we say yeah and it will come back and just say clear data successful okay so you know we're in a position now where we can start setting up software um, assuming that it's a, a basic system um, just just one site being monitored um, all we do is we go to patrol setup we go to checkpoint setup and in this screen we need to register the checkpoints that we're going to be mounting uh, around the site okay so I've got two uh, two checkpoints which are on the table in front of me I just disconnected the reader and I've just read one one checkpoint and I've just read a second checkpoint I reconnect the reader and I click batch read and as soon as it does that it will bring in the serial numbers of the checkpoints in the order in which they were read so I'm, go I'm now going to click into this field and, and give them a name okay, in this case I've entered main reception and for the second one I'm going to put rear loading bay here we go I click out of the field so there's two checkpoints that have been registered okay so if I click exit at this point I've done you know once you've defined checkpoints it, it, it can read them okay but it's important that the buttons or checkpoints must be defined in the system before they can be read all right and they can be set up to identify guards you know so you can identify that each individual guard um, you, know, you can identify a checkpoint which is the physical location they've got to visit and you, know, you may even want to define events um, so that you can record what the guard does when they're at a certain location i.e. set an alarm system, uh, lock a gate or, or, or whatever okay so just to, just to confirm the basics here um, if I now go back to basic operation okay and I'm going to disconnect the reader again I'm going to read the two checkpoints that I've just created I'm now reconnecting the reader and to download the reader I click read data and you'll get this progress bar and an indication of how many pieces of data it's read and once that's happened we can run a history report we simply specify the start and end date and time and click inquiry and it will bring in the readings uh, of the system yeah. so we can see the, the two initial checkpoints when we set it up followed by a further two a little bit later okay right at the moment if we look at patrol setup yeah we can see an icon here for guard so if we want to set up uh, a couple of buttons for two different security guards to identify them we click on guard and again I disconnect the reader and I read my two buttons they're going to be used to identify guards now these are normally on like a key ring holder and are referred to as personnel tags okay so I've read those two points again I can now go and click on batch read and it will read in those buttons and I can now name them so I'll put the guard names in So that's the guards named all right now I mentioned earlier about event books um, if we need to set up if you need to set up um, an event book um, to record some uh, incidents or actions that the guard may perform whilst on tour if we go to data maintain and we go to parameter setup we have an option up here where we can select event function so we set that to yes and we confirm okay and if we go back to patrol setup now you'll get this extra icon here for event setup and the process is exactly the same as what we've done with a checkpoint and a guard we simply go into the event screen okay we we we, we I'm disconnecting the reader and reading two event buttons reconnecting the reader batch read and again I've brought in the serial numbers from my event 
event wallet and I'm going to give them a, a couple of names that are going to relate to the actions which might be set alarm and locked gate okay right that's it so at this point we've pretty much set up everything that you need for a basic system so now we go into the typical sequence of events okay so I've, I've disconnected the reader okay so what's going to happen now is the security guard will offer up his personnel button to identify it which I've just done All right, he's now going to visit a particular location so I'm now reading the, the, the checkpoint to say where they are and I'm now going to read an event to say what I did at that location okay I'm now handing the reader to another guard and the other security guard is logging on with their personnel tag they're reading the checkpoint to say where they are and they're now reading an event to say what they did okay so once I've got that I can plug the reader back in I'll go to basic operation I click read okay I now inquiry on the report again and there you can see um, the information where well, we've got the, the guard name the checkpoint name where they were the event what they did this is the actual serial number of the reader and here's the date and time that, 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 that this uh, event took place okay if I just repeat that process again again I'm reading another uh, personnel tag to identify the guard I'm reading another location and I'm reading an event connecting the reader reading the data inquiring and we've got the other guard now uh, saying what he did etc etc okay okay the next stage to the system or setup of the system uh, is to go to patrol setup we go to plan setup. Now this is a little bit more involved, but this is where we set up the rules where we analyze you know, the collected data to make sure that guards are performing regular tasks. So I click on add plan. I give the plan a name. I'm going to call it daily check. And then down here I can select um, the checkpoints that I want checked. So I'm going to add all. All right, so these points have to be checked. All right, if I go into patrol schedule now, and if I click on to batch schedule, I can define how frequently those points have to be checked each day on a daily basis. Now I could lock it down to one particular guard, but if I leave the field blank, anyone can do it. Okay, so if I say that the working day, for argument's sake, starts at eight o'clock in the morning, and finishes at eight o'clock at night and if I say uh, it takes 30 minutes to, to walk around and do those points uh, if I leave this rest time set at zero it, it will divide this time period into 30 minute slots when those two points have to be checked all right if I change it to 60 it will divide it into hourly slots if I change it to 120, two hourly ch ch um, checks. And if I set it to um, 240, it will need those points checking every four hours. So I'm gonna set it at four hours. I'm gonna click confirm. And there you go, it's, it's divided up that time, uh, uh, that period of time for the day into three sections between eight and 12, 12 and four, and four and eight. Okay, if I go to days off, you know, if they if they weren't working on Saturday and Sunday, I can exclu exclude them from the check. But if I leave them off, we're going to check every day during during the period. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, I click confirm. Okay, once that's confirmed. 
and I've created a plan, assuming that I've got valid data, I can go and run, uh, if I go back to basic operation, I now can go to a patrol report, and I specify my dates and times, and I do an inquiry, and, um, okay, what we can see here are the three checks that have to be done each day and none of them have been satisfied so far because you can't apply a plan retrospectively you can only create a plan and, and look at the data going forward All right so if we look at the moment the time is 259 um, 259 so so we're in this period here between 12 and 4 okay so so I'm going to take my reader now I'm going to register as one of the guards. I'm now going to read the two checkpoints. I'm going to connect the reader. I'm going to read the data. I'm going to do another inquiry. Aha. We now have a situation where this particular period has been successfully fulfilled in the sense that there are two checks that needed to be carried out. There's been two arrive times and nothing's been missed. And if I click on this little arrow here, I can get a little bit more information about the names of the points visited, the name of the guard. If there was an event, it would have been detailed. You can see the uh, time of each event. And you can also get a feedback on the number of steps that the uh, guard uh, performed during that, that, uh, that time. Okay. Once you've got the information, um, you can export the information to Excel, or you can do a print preview, and it gives you an idea of what you've got there. And at this point, we can we can either print um, or, or save the file. Okay. We also have the ability to um, look at information in a, in a statistical way. Um, we can get information on the statistics of a guard. All right, so you know, since we've been monitoring the patrols, David Smith's read two points, so we've got some feedback there. Um, we can also look at the statistics for, for a checkpoint and you can see how many times the main reception or the loading bay has been read over the period. Okay, um, well that's it for now. Um, that's given you a basic feel for what, what, uh, what you can do. Um, thank you for your time and uh, we'll have some uh, more videos for you shortly.